good morning to all of you today the topic which i am going to discuss with you that is measuring producer surplus under perfect competition before this uh, discussion we have uh, discuss about what is perfect competitions how the price and output is determined under the perfect competition so all these we have discussed earlier now the today the topic uh, which uh, we are going to discuss in detail that is about what is consumer surplus what is uh, producer surplus and how economic efficiency of perfectly competitive market is uh, working and what is allocative uh, efficiency of perfectly competitive uh, equilibrium then uh, maximization of total economic surplus is there then we have the economic efficiency and equity this these all issues we are going to discuss in detail about Uh, measuring producer surplus under perfect competitions as i told you uh, in previous slide this is the uh, main topic of our today discussions firstly i am going to uh, a brief idea about what we have discussed earlier that a perfectly market is one in which the number of buyers and sellers is very large i told you that the number of buyers and sellers is very large in case of perfectly market uh, conditions then all engaged in buying and selling a homogeneous product this is the main characteristics of the perfect competition that the number of buyers and sellers is very large and the um, commodity or product they are selling they are uh, the nature of homogeneous natures then two parties which bargain in such a market are buyers and sellers these two parties are engaged in this process and they are known, they known as buyers and sellers and they sell buying and selling of homogeneous product and the law of demand is applicable to buyers and the law of supply apply to the supply uh, supply side and uh, to the supplier so this is about the brief uh, about the perfect competition uh, apart from this price is determined at a point where the two forces are equal this is known as equivalent price as i told you that where quantity demanded and supplied at this price is the co- called the equivalent point, uh, quantity means to say that this is the point where de- demand and supply intersect each other so price is determined at a point where these two forces are equal that is known as the demand and supply then demand and supply analysis is very uh, useful in knowing consumer surplus and producer surplus so this is just an introduction to interlink the previous uh, concept with this today discussion that is uh, producer surplus we are going to discuss in detail about what is producer surplus before that i am going to discuss with you that what is economic efficiency of perfectly competitive market one of the important concept in this uh, perfect uh, competitive market that is economic efficiency meaning to say that these two questions generally arise that how well do the competitive markets perform to allocate society scarce resources as we know that the resources are scarce and it is uh, Uh, very important to know that how competitive marks uh, markets perform to allocate these society scarce resources among the society uh, okay then we have do they use and allocate society resources efficiently for satisfying the satisfaction of wants and of the people as you know that the main uh, objective of any uh, market is to satisfy the needs and want of the people so uh, do they uh, use and allocate society resources efficiently in order to satisfying the satisfaction of wants of people so these question are very important in in case of economic efficiency of perfectly competitive market then we have the resources of the society are efficiently used if they are so used and allocated that the consumers get the maximum possible satisfaction this is possible when the resources of society are efficiently used if they are used and allocated that the consumer when the consumer get the maximum possible satisfaction by the use of these uh, scarce resources provided by the this competitive market then we have the consumer surplus a brief introductions brief uh, about about consumer surplus it is obtained by the consumer what is it it is obtained by the consumer from buying a product what he is willing to pay over and above the market and what actually he pay for the commodity so this is the basic difference uh, with the this difference we calculate the consumer surplus what he is willing to pay over and above the market price and what he actually pay for the commodity it is important to note that 
डिमांड का वो फिर कॉमोडिटी रिफ्लेक्ट दैट वट प्राइज द कंज्यूमर आर विलिंग टू पे फॉर वेरियस यूनिट्स ऑफ गुड्स यू मस्ट नो अबाउट द डिमांड कर्म ऑफ कॉमोडिटी वट इट रिफ्लेक्ट बेसिकली इट रिफ्लेक्ट द प्राइज दैट कंज्यूमर आर विलिंग फॉर वेरियस यूनिट्स ऑफ गुड्स फॉर इट्स कंजम्पन दैट कंज्यूमर सरप्लस बेसिकली इट मेजर द नेट गेन और वेल बींग बाय द कंज्यूमर फॉर बाइंग द कॉमोडिटी फ्रॉम द मार्केट वट ही और शी द कंज्यूमर बाइंग फ्रॉम द मार्केट एंड वट दे एक्चुअली गेट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ नेट गेन और वेल बींग दिस इज नोन एज द कंज्यूमर सरप्लस इन नेक्स्ट यू कैन सी दैट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द ग्राफिक प्रजेंटेशन द शेडेड एरिया यू कैन सी दैट दिस शेडेड एरिया रिफ्लेक्ट द कंज्यूमर सरप्लस हाउ इट वर्क दैट इट इज बेसिकली डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टोटल वैल्यू दैट कंज्यूमर इज विलिंग टू पे एंड द पेमेंट दैट दे एक्चुअली मेक्स फॉर द परचेज ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट देर आर टू थिंग्स टू बी नोटेड दैट वन इज दैट वट ही इज विलिंग टू पे Uh, and what actually he make the payment for the purchase of product you can see that on o axis there is a quantity and on y axis there is price and uh, oq uh, is the amount of quantity which he wants to purchase and op price which he uh, paid for the Uh, purchase of the product so the demand curves that is uh, their slope is fr uh, from left to right it is a uh, down it it show the downward to the uh, o x axis so it shows that the shaded area that is p d e it is the uh, area actually uh, the, the price which he willing to pay that is p d but actually but he pay that is o p so the shaded area uh, which is above op price ode that is the consumer surplus so basically it is the difference between what he is uh, willing to pay and what he actually make the payment this is uh, the difference between the total value that consumer is willing to pay and the payment that he actually makes for the purchase of product this difference is known as the consumer surplus then we have the producer surplus this is one of the important concept as i told you in uh, perfectly competitive market that it is the excess of the market price at which producer sell the quantity of a commodity over and above the minimum price at which uh, they would be actually uh, willing to uh, apply, supply it so there is uh, two concept here the what seller is uh, or at what uh, price seller is willing to pay and what actually he receive uh, for uh, selling the product so this is the uh, difference for, to calculate the producer surplus what he is willing to uh, at price what he is willing to supply the uh, commodity and what actually he uh, receive uh, from uh, after selling the quantity of commodity over and above the minimum price so producer surplus is the difference Uh, is is basically it is a difference between the actual amount that a producer received by selling a given quantity of commodity and the minimum amount that he expect to receive for its same quantity so you must know about that this is the difference what he actually willing to uh, at the price what he actually willing to supply it and what uh, he receive so this difference shows the producer surplus the minimum price which the producer would accept to supply a unit of commodity is its marginal cost which basically it is the marginal cost of the producer which reflects the opportunity cost of resources used for its production so this uh, definition shows that how we calculate the producer surplus so as i told you producer surplus basically is the difference between the actual amount that a producer receive by selling a given quantity of uh, commodity and the minimum amount that he expect what he expect and what he receive so this difference shows the producer surplus in the next slide we will uh, explain with the help of a graph that you can see that the shaded area which shows the producer surplus how it works i am going to explain that the producer surplus earned by the producer is a measure of benefits obtained by them for producing and exchange of the commodity so this is about the meaning of producer surplus you can see that uh, on ox axis there is quantity and oy axis there is a price op price which uh, producer actually uh, receive after uh, selling the oq quantity but what he expect from the market that is uh, os this shaded area shows that he expect from the market uh, os price but he actually receive from the market that is op so this shaded area 
shows the producer surplus ss is the supply curve and dd is the demand curve uh, the slope of the uh, supply curve is upward and the slope of the demand curve is downward so you can see uh, on the screen that this shaded area now this shaded area shows the producer surplus how it is uh, producer surplus as i told you what he expects from the market and what he actually receives from the market so this difference basically is known as the producer surplus now we have as i told you we will also discuss about the allocative absence of perfectly competitive equilibrium what does it mean one of the most beneficial feature of perfectly competitive market is that it result in allocative absence it shows that it result in allocative absence which means that it enables the use of resources for production of goods that ensure maximum welfare benefits to person in a society how it is possible it is generally assumed that the there is a maximum uh, consumer surplus and producer surplus because the resources is efficiently allocated to the society it also implies the mutually beneficial exchange between the consumer and producer of goods it is only possible and it is generally believed that it is uh, one of the condition of the perfectly competitive equilibrium under condition of perfectly competitive markets opti optimum production and exchange of goods take place which ensures the achievement of maximum social wear how it is possible it is generally assumed that in perfectly competitive optimum production exchange of goods it is takes place which results and which ensures the achievement of maximum social welfare so this is about the allocative essence of perfectly equilibrium now we can uh, explain and we can uh, describe it with the help of a graph you can see that oq quantity is the uh, is the point where maximum total economic surplus and therefore leads to maximum social benefit what uh, it conclude it concluded that competitive markets perform quite well in allocating scarce and social resources it is generally assumed that it is only possible that there is no alternative allocation of resources of goods then efficiently economic uh, surplus is there but generally it is not possible in market perfect competition is assumption it is generally assumed that uh, there is a number of buyer and seller is uh, large and they are selling the homogeneous product but uh, apart from this uh, there is monopolistic market is there monopoly market is there oligopoly is there so uh, there are other markets are also there so it is not possible the perfect conditions of Uh, where all these assumptions fulfill then it uh, comes under uh, the uh, perfect competition you can see on the graph when we uh, reduce the quantity from oq to oq1 there is again loss for uh, producer and surplus which is shown with the help of shaded area and when we increase uh, uh, because the demand is high and the supply is uh, lower at this point and when we increase uh, the demand from oq1 in this case supply is more and demand is less so in both the cases uh producers uh, lose uh, the surplus which he actually gains and this perfectly market competitions assumption is not possible every everywhere so therefore when we uh, increase or reduce the uh, quantity supplied or um, purchase that in 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 both the cases there is decline or there is uh, loss for producer and uh, supplier both then we have the maximization of total economic surplus you must know about how uh, what does it mean by the maximization of total economic surplus both the consumer and uh, producers gain from exchange and production of goods as you know that there is a process uh, of exchange and production of goods and in uh, both the cases consumer and producers gain from the society point of view the total gain is the sum of the consumer surplus and producer surplus as i told you this is the condition only and only in the case of perfect competition that total gain is the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus the allocative efficiency in consumption production and exchange of goods and therefore maximum social benefit is attained when the total economic surplus total in economic surplus you must know it is the uh, sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus is maximum this is only and only possible in the case of perfect competition where it generally assumed that the gain is the uh, sum of the consumer surplus and producer surplus and this we can explain the uh, with the help of a graph the sum of consumer surplus 
and the producer surplus the sum of areas dpe pes you can see on the screen that is shaded area is the total economic surplus then we have the price and output determined by the demand for and supply of goods in a perfectly competitive market this maximum total economic surplus is actually attained as i told you this is only and only possible in the case of perfectly competition it is assumption and it is assumed that the economic surplus is maximum when the consumer surplus and producer surplus is high then we have the economic efficiency and equity what does it under condition of perfect competition welfare is the maximum welfare is the maximum is based on the thinking that the total economic surplus is true measure of social welfare economic surplus is the true measure of social welfare which is sum of producer and uh, consumer surplus in this case the effect of distribution of output and income on social welfare is ignored so why it is possible because in this case the effect of distribution of output and income on social welfare is totally ignored to consider the size of the total economic surplus as the sole criterion of assessment of social welfare means that rupee gives each person the same satisfaction same value irrespective whether the person is consumer or producer uh, seller rich or poor it is assumed in this case that uh, rupee what the value of rupee gives each person the same satisfaction which is to purely assumptions which is not possible without considering that the whether the person is consumer supplier uh, producer rich or poor but condition is different when consumer consumers are poor household whereas producer are rich individual in this case it is not possible that the value of rupee gives each person the same satisfaction irrespective and but in in, in the case of perfect competitions economic surplus uh, generally assume that it is a true measure of social welfare maximizing total economic surplus leads to economic efficiency it is condition of perfectly competition i have told you again and again but it will not be necessarily fair and equitable it is very very important to note that maximizing total economic surplus leads to economic efficiency we can consider it but it will not be necessarily fair for fair or equitable how it is the maximization of total economic surplus does not capture the equity aspect of social welfare that's why to total economic surplus leads to economic efficiency but it will not be necessarily fair or equitable the maximization of total surplus leads to the outcome which is economical economically efficient but it may not be necessarily fair or equitable as i told you earlier some economics consider that once total surplus is maximized it can be redistributed in accordance with society notion of equity or fairness some economists but some are against this statement it is argued that make the pie as big as possible and then distribute it according to society's notion of equity but it is not possible in practically that make the pie as big as possible however it is very difficult to redistribute output and income so as to ensure equity and there are thereby to increase social welfare the basic uh, criticism in this case that uh, because in co uh, perfectly competitive market it is generally assumed that total economic surplus is the true measure of social welfare but it is not possible that the value of rupee gives the uh, same satisfaction to uh, all the producers all the consumer uh, whether they are rich or poor so that's why perfect competitions is a, uh, is is not possible in all the cases other markets are also working there so it is very very difficult to redistribute output and income so as to ensure equity and therefore thereby to increase social welfare so this is all about the two day discussions and in this discussions uh, i hope that after this session you will able to understand the concept of economic efficiency then you will also able to define the meaning of consumer surplus producer surplus and how allocative efficiency of perfect market equilibrium works and also the concept of equilibrium efficiency inequity and you will also know about the maximization of total economic per, uh, surplus so this is all about from my side as uh, in this whole discussion the main focus was on the measuring producer surplus under perfect competitions thank you